When rappelling or abseiling on two joint ropes, climbers will often use the flat overhand bend, also known as the offset overhand. Why? Let's talk about this knot and address more than just strength. Hi there again, I'm Jason. It still happens about every other time I climb with two ropes on a multi-pitch climb with a new climbing partner. I set up our rappel and join my ropes with a flat overhand bend. My partner takes a look and asks with a hint of astonishment in their voice, is that an EDK? Yes, besides being called both the flat overhand and the offset overhand, this knot has also been called the European death knot, a moniker that has helped perpetuate a lot of mistrust of the knot. But many climbers and guide services will use it in appropriate applications. In fact, the American Mountain Guides Association recommends the knot for joining two ropes for a double strand rappel. Let's talk about why because it has some pros and cons, and we'll get into some application specifics, including some circumstances where it may not be the best choice. We need to start with how to tie it well, because some of the myths around the knot may come from confusing it with other knots. To tie it, we bring those loose ends of our rope together. Taking maybe 45 centimeters or 18 inches, we make a loop by running the free ends over the standing ends, ensuring we don't cross strands. Then we drive the free ends through the back side of the resulting loop. We want to ensure we have no unnecessary crosses and that we have about 30 centimeters or a foot of tail. We really don't want less or more than that, as less means a rolling knot could have the tails pull through and more can lead to accidentally confusing the tails with the rappel lines. We push the knot and also pull all four resultant strands to tighten the knot. Additionally, if we have ropes of unequal diameter, unequal to a point, we'll get to that, we want the lesser diameter rope to be on the bottom, that is closer to the strands that will be weighted, as pointed out by IFMGA guide and technical director of the AMGA, Dale Remsberg, as this may constrict the knot more tightly. To do this, I make sure that the skinnier strand is on the outside of the loop as I cross the ends over the standing strands. Then I can push the skinnier rope below the fatter rope without generating unnecessary crosses. Multiple pull tests using different rope diameters and materials suggest the knot strength to be typically over six kilonewtons or around 1400 pounds with rolling happening at around four or five kilonewtons. And you can see in this example with the overhand on a bike being pulled in the way a flat overhand would be pulled, a sort of an example of typical results. Is that enough? And what about all the stories about this not failing? Well, according to both Climbing Magazine and Thomas Moyer, many of the supposed failures of the offset overhand were actually on an offset figure eight. Basically, instead of running the free ends through the back side of the loop, we finish with a complete wrap around the standing ends and then drive the ends through the front of the loop which both rolls and fails at around half the load. As far as the knot strength goes, I think Grant Prattley's writing and testing of joining knots is instructive. Both he and Matt Halmers illustrate how a climbing rappel on two strands has half the force on one strand and half the force on the other knotted strand. So if a person weighed 225 pounds with gear, he'd generate one kilonewton split at half a kilonewton on each strand. Mr. Prattley distinguished this from canyoneering, where we might be more likely to pull this knot in a line with all the weight on a single strand. But when thinking about a knot applied to a rappel, we have other considerations beyond strength. First of which is that any offset knot will tend to rotate, giving its non-knotted side to the wall when running over a terrain feature, reducing the likelihood of getting stuck. But the flat or offset overhand is also small, Bigger knots are more likely to get jammed in cracks. And we also have its ease of tying. Are you more likely to tie this knot correctly when compared to other options in the dark? Or with gloves and frozen ropes? Or while exhausted or hypoxic? Finally, it is a fairly easy knot to verify. We can find unnecessary crosses, incorrect construction, and tail length inadequacies pretty easily. But there are limits to the knot. As people have been experimenting with exceptionally light and often slippery tag lines, we can move well beyond the ability of the knot to hold. So knowing if your particular setup will work is paramount. As noted above, Mr. Prattley doesn't find the strength margin over expected forces to be enough for his wrist tolerance in single strand applications. That leads to other joining options. Adding a second flat overhand on top of the first, a stacked overhand, 
or using what is, in essence, a barrel knot using two loops around before running the tails through, or a double overhand, are two options Mr. Prattley recommends for canyoneering. The former may approach 40% stronger, depending on materials, while being 100% larger of a knot. The latter may be 70% stronger, while only being 25% larger. Both are still offset, showing the flat side of the knot to the terrain. Then there is the Gibbs bend and half Gibbs bend, either taking both free ends through the overhand loop for a second time, again, no unnecessary crosses, or taking only one strand through a second time. These knots do a pretty good job of adding strength, staying offset, staying small, and maintaining some ease of tying. The half Gibbs, that is putting one free end back through the loop a second time, adds over 50% more strength while adding only 10% more knot size. Andy Kirkpatrick, for instance, thinks the half Gibbs might strike the best balance across all the pertinent criteria, and also noting it works better with ropes with a wider diameter difference. Mr. Prattley doesn't recommend the half Gibbs for canyoneering, as he finds running a strand back through a second time while ensuring no unnecessary crosses to be more difficult than adding a second wrap with only a pass through the loop once, as with a double overhand, or adding a second knot independent of the first, like with the stacked overhand. So each of these other knots are probably worthy of their own video, but this video was focused on the flat or offset overhand. Is the offset overhand bend a death knot prone to failure at every instance? No. Does it have some advantages to other options? Yes. Does that mean it is the best tool for every and all applications? Like pretty much everything in climbing, probably not. How do you prefer to join your ropes? Tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. You can watch a related video on some considerations for choosing between ropes and tag lines for descending, or maybe check out our entire rock climbing safety series. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.